All right, so we've been talking a lot about the 2020 Stanley Cup playoffs. We have been giving the NHL its bravos, its kudos, because they've done a very good job in terms of setting up the NHL bubble, giving the players a safe environment to play in. It's just been like the fourth or fifth week in a row or whatever with zero positive tests, so that's a very, very good thing. But when it comes to the NHL bubble, things are only going to get more complicated as time goes on. And I'm not talking about during the 2020 Stanley Cup playoffs. Oh no, we're not talking about that because the entire opposite is actually going to happen with the playoffs. Because as the playoffs goes on further, more teams are getting eliminated, less people in the bubble, it actually becomes easier. But today we're talking about the 2020-2021 NHL season and how things are going to go down. Because John Shannon, yeah, you know John Shannon, he was formerly on Sportsnet, he would talk on the radio, talk on TV quite a bunch. Not there anymore, but he is still an NHL insider. He posted on Twitter earlier yesterday a tweet that kind of blew up and that kind of indicates how things could be heading towards if... This is actually factual. Take a look at this tweet over here from John Shannon, 3.07 p.m. August 24th. I'm hearing that the NHL and the NHLPA have had preliminary talks about next season. One proposal is to create four bubble cities and rotating all 31 teams in those venues in eight game increments. At the present, there's no indication if all the cities would be in Canada, but it makes the most sense. So how about that, eh? Instead of having two bubble cities, Toronto and Edmonton, and having 12 teams in Toronto, 12 teams in Edmonton, and just playing it out like that, four bubble cities throughout the entirety of the year, or at least throughout the entirety of the year, assuming there is no vaccine found and that this whole pandemic continues on, but imagine that, four bubble cities, and all 31 teams would rotate throughout the bubbles in eight-game increments. What that means is that you would have a group of teams, let's say seven or eight, because if you divide 31 by four, you get yourself 7.75, and there are four hub cities for 31 teams. Let's say you have a group of seven or eight teams all in one bubble one of the four different bubbles. These teams will play against each other and they'll play eight games. Now, I don't know if that means eight games each, where each team in the bubble gets eight games, one game against every other team, making for a total of what would be 32 games in the bubble, because eight games multiplied by eight teams is equal to 64 games, divided by two teams per game is equal to about 32 games. So, I don't know if what John Shannon is saying here means that there will be 32 games played in each bubble before they rotate, or there will just be eight games in total, where every team plays two games instead of eight, because the math on that works out to be two games multiplied by eight teams is equal to 16 games divided by two teams per game, equal all the way back to eight games in the bubble. But that honestly seems a little bit more... How do I say it? A little bit more lax, in my opinion. Because I don't know if it would be super, let's just say, efficient to only have each team play two games and then they have to go to another bubble and then they'll play another two games and then they'll have to go to another bubble. If you do that for an 82-game season, because the NHL has stated that they do want to get a full season done for 2020-2021, then if you do the calculations on that, you do 82 divided by four hub cities, which is equal to about 20. So they'll play that amount of games each per bubble, assuming every NHL team shares an equal amount of time between the bubbles. But every two games, you're gonna need to switch it up and go to a different bubble. Just for the safety of the league, I don't really know how practical that is compared to the opposite idea of just playing eight games in a bubble and then going over to another bubble and then rotating after your team plays another eight games. Because that way, your team is playing the same amount of games in the bubble because that doesn't change, the amount of bubbles don't change, but the amount of traveling your team has to do, it reduces significantly. Under the first thing we were talking about, if they change teams every two games, then they're going to have to travel 
40 times throughout the different bubbles. If they change every 8 games, they only travel 10 times, because that's just how the math works. 82 games divided by 2 games per trip is equal to 40 trips, and then 82 games divided by 8 games per trip instead is equal to only 10 trips. So you can kind of see how there's a lot of ambiguity there, but in my opinion, it makes more sense just to believe that when John Shannon says rotating all 31 teams in the venues for 8 game increments, I would believe it mostly translates to each team playing 8 games, so probably getting a total of 32 games out there in each bubble before the teams rotate. Furthermore, I think with more practicality involved in this idea, every time your team switches bubbles, you would be put into a new bubble with different teams that you weren't playing with in the previous bubble. Actually, you'll probably have like one or two, three different teams that you carry over with, but for the most part, for the sake of randomizing it, I think it would make more sense to do it like that. Obviously, that's my own personal speculation. That's because it's not in the tweet here, but it doesn't make sense if you're playing in a bubble with seven or eight teams to rotate to a different bubble and keep playing the same seven or eight teams. So to me, this gives the league a lot of opportunity to really randomize and get a lot of parity there between the matchups so the teams aren't playing the same teams over and over again. And... It reduces the idea of, oh, this one Detroit Red Wings team is really bad and we play them so many times in this bubble. Obviously, the other teams in our bubble are going to have free wins because we're playing Detroit every other night. So it'll get rid of the possibility of something like that occurring. But also on John Shannon's front, he mentioned how there's no indication on whether or not the cities would be in Canada. And he says it makes the most sense. And honestly, just at this point of the world's development with the whole pandemic, yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense for the thing to be in Canada and not in the US of A. Sorry, United States. I love you guys, but... Come on, man, there's a lot of stuff going on in America, and it's caused the safety of a lot of the league's plans to kind of be jeopardized in a way. And we saw that with the Vegas Hub City application that was very, very heavily looked at and almost close to happening, if I recall correctly, up until the league kind of said, okay, no, it's not safe if we go to Vegas, let's just go to Edmonton or Toronto instead. But we do have a few other options of cities that could be able to be in the running if the NHL opened itself up to four bubbles. Obviously, Edmonton and Toronto, those two are probably going to be in consideration because of how successful the bubble was in the 2020 playoffs. But Vancouver, man, Vancouver was up in the running the entire time. It's just the league didn't want to comply with the safety precautions that Bonnie Henry laid out, which is why Vancouver ultimately opted out themselves. It would have been nice, man. It would have been nice. Obviously, just being here and just acknowledging that Vancouver is the city would be nice. But at the same time, you know, the games are still going to be played. It's not like fans are going to be there anyway, unless there's a vaccine. So it doesn't really matter where the games are played, just as long as we're getting the hockey that we crave. But there certainly would be a few other cities in my mind that could go out there, make a bid, and actually be suitable contenders for having that spot. I would actually be interested in seeing if any teams that don't have NHL cities would actually be able to cope up with a bubble-like scenario. Try to go to the places that have the least amount of cases in Canada. Like, somewhere in Saskatchewan, to be honest. Like, Saskia's got, I think, 40 fewer times the entire cases that Quebec has, so... Just taking a look at it from a standpoint of, okay, Saskatchewan is safe, why not try out Saskatoon, see if we can do a bubble there? That would make the most sense to me if you're taking a look at it from a safety standpoint, especially from the perspective that, come on, it's not like we're going to have fans in the building anyway. We're not losing out on any sponsorships or advertising deals because no one's going to see the product because everybody's going to be watching from home. So there certainly are a lot of questions based off of this one John Shannon tweet, and I can't believe it's been nine minutes already. I can go on about this forever, honestly, just thinking about possibilities and ideas, but... There you have it. Apparently, according to what John Shannon is hearing, proposals for 2020-2021 have already started, and the one that he laid out is a four-hub city format, which will have teams rotating every eight games 
and it'll give them the opportunity to play against each other. However, the cities have yet to be determined, and whether or not they're even going to be in Canada or US have not been determined as well. So talk to me in the comments what you think about this idea. Would you be for it? Honestly, with the way the NHL has handled this bubble so far, I'm confident in the league's abilities to at least try to do something on a bigger scale. But talk to me in the comments what you think about this idea. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.